This episode is sponsored by Zenro Clothing Co. Pick up your tees and our accessories at zenroclothingco.com and be sure to use offer code SOCRATES at checkout for 20% off select items. Also, if you're not into uh, spending the money, just check out the Zenro Radio playlist. ZenroClothingCo.com, music for your everyday. This episode also is sponsored by The Pornian Bakery. If you're located in the Pornian area of Scarborough, Toronto, be sure to check out The Pornian Bakery, say what's up to Arvel, and uh, pick up a donut or two. Bake daily, crafted with love. This episode also is sponsored by Podbean. Podbean is the podcasting platform of choice. It's the one that me and Vish use, and um, is great, you know, if you're uh, looking to start that DIY podcast yourself definitely check out podbean use uh the link podbean.com slash socratic gamers and gain one month of unlimited podcasting for free test it out build that content uh anyone could podcast right vish yep start a start a podcast and uh get your ideas out there all right enjoy the episode all right we're just not gonna waste time and jump into the fact that Batman was probably the best movie I've seen in a long time. What do you think, Vish? Yeah. Best really movie? Good. Best movie you've seen in a long time? Comparable to Dune? Comparable to Dune. Wow, comparable to Dune. Would you say it's the best superhero movie of all time? Yeah, I think so. I know, I was thinking that too. I think so. I was like, which one can I compare it to? And I was like, maybe the Christopher Nolan ones, but... It see like with all the other superhero movies, I felt that those ones are like a movie adaption of of an of a comic, mm-hmm. right? This one felt like a uh, well, I, all right, it is a movie adaption of a comic, but it felt like they were trying to make it more of a movie and like less like the comic. But this one felt more like the comic than the movie. I, I guess the only other comparable one would be like Watchmen. Like we talked about that. Yeah, one. it has a lot of similarities to that. But I don't know if, I don't know if I could say that Watchmen was better than this in terms of a superhero movie. What do you think? Mm, uh, it, yeah, yeah. No, I think maybe it's like a bias thing too because we do like Batman. Like we don't know those other characters as well. Oh, like, in terms of Watchmen? Yeah. Okay, yeah, fair, fair point, fair point. I, I was thinking with the Watchmen, too, it's like that one was still comic booky, but this one was like more of a horror movie. You know, like... Yeah, the, this was more in in the sense of a movie like like a murder mystery or, yeah. or kind of like that. And it, yeah, yeah and, and, and that's what made it over... The, like, like, you can either be too movie focused which i felt like christopher nolan's ones were Mm -hmm. right his version of batman's were like okay i'm gonna make a really great movie which is like awesome yeah yeah. but it was like an adaptation of the comic to make a really great movie Mm -hmm. and then with Watchmen, it was like too comic so it was like it was good as like it adhered to the comics but in terms of a movie it's like okay this is a good movie but it's more comic than movie mm-hmm. but this one was like a perfect balance between comic and movie because it, it it took elements it stayed true to the comic but then took elements of really good movies mm-hmm. you know so like um my my idea like my thought was like it's sort of a mashup between like seven which is the murder mystery where they're trying to catch the serial killer mm-hmm. and then uh, mix with like the departed because of the drug stuff you're yeah. trying to find the mole in the in the batman mm-hmm. and then like cyberpunky too like, yeah like yeah, blade yeah. runner kind of right you know? oh yeah yeah like gotham felt very blade i think runner. it's the, the the color variant of that kind of stuff yeah yeah, yeah totally yeah and like even the opening scene when they're talking about like halloween Mm-hmm. And he's walking through the city. It felt very neo punk future, right? Even right. him driving around on the motorbike was very neo punk future. Like the club was also a neo punk future. They're doing the drops in the eyes, which is like a new type of drug. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah. It, it was like that seemed very like neo punk. Mm-hmm. And like even the the contact lenses, which were recording everything. Yes. See, more neo punk. I was like, oh, this is a very like edgy movie. Mm-hmm. And then I'd also mix like Saw in there. Because the way the Riddler was like setting up all of his kills, yeah, yeah, were yeah. very saw like you had to figure out the puzzle to survive, right? Yeah, right. So this is like you took all the elements of a great movie, but then yeah. it was also to the like comics. like sure like the puzzle and everything, but there's also layers to the characters, which I don't think right, wasn't right, right. as much as 
in the other ones compared to the other ones right like this was more like in the movie sense there was actual like levels to these characters it, totally totally very different like who was um why was uh um to kyle right yeah, yeah doing what she was doing because she's the daughter yeah, of the yeah so like that was the oh full spoilers sorry. yeah full yeah. spoiler so that was like oh so that makes sense why she's doing that yeah, yeah. and then it's like in the connection between batman and alfred like when he almost lost him where his right, right. where he's like he My didn't want to go fear. through that his biggest fear was going yeah. through that again where he lost he's lost family, his family. Yeah. yeah so which was i don't think i've ever seen that done before like yeah that. totally yeah, yeah for sure for sure and i think i forgot to throw in that it also had watchman elements as well yeah. which is pretty obvious yeah um but yeah so in terms of the character um like fleshing out the characters in a more robust way that's the thing that i saw uh, before going into this, it's like this is the first Gotham that felt alive, mm -hmm. and I was like, "Yeah, like everyone seemed to know what was going on." Right. Like, it felt like Dune in that way. Yeah, yeah. Like, you know, Dune, like you jump into Dune and you're like in the middle of it. So in the middle, exactly. Out, yeah, like, oh, like there's on. no like it's a living world, and there's no like um like an intro to this new Batman. It's already Batman. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's like you're already, you put into middle right in the middle of the scenario. Like, right, right, right. People are already afraid of him. Just looking at like. That uh, was a good part. In I the like the beginning, beginning yeah. bit where it's like they had the bat symbol out, but people were just afraid of any dark alley because they think he's in there. Yeah, yeah, he put that fear into yeah, them. Yeah, he put and that like, kind of fear, yeah. And you, you got to see, like, oh, one thing that I really loved, like, right away from the opening, I was like, this movie is amazing. I, like, mm -hmm. turned to my sister. I was like, this is already really, really mm -hmm. good. Um, the way he said, like, the way it was, like, a dialogue, like, very Watchmen-like. Yeah, very Watchmen-like, right? like, like reading, like, like, a diary. Yeah, like, a diary. That's what they said. It's, like, um, it. the movie, I was reading tweets beforehand, okay. and they are saying, like, the the movie is, like, a diary perspective of Bruce mm. Wayne going through this murder mystery. So, it's, right. like, oh, what's this going to be like? I was, like, that's why I was super amped for this mm -hmm, movie. Mm -hmm. And then the opening scene when he said, like, it's a big city and there's a lot of crime. I can't be everywhere. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then it was, like, ooh, ah. that... Oh, sorry. Yeah, sorry. Athena's joining us in the in the room today. Um, so yeah, I, I was mm -hmm. like, when he said, "Oh, I can't be everywhere," I was thinking, "Oh, what a genius way to put it!" Because then you show how, even though he can't be everywhere, he's still afraid. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, all right, we cut that part out. Yeah. So, anyways, um, yeah, he was. It was really like awesome how. Because you, you, when you see old Batman movies, it seems like he's stopping all the crime. Mm -hmm. Like Spider-Man. It seems like he's stopping all the crime. Yeah. Right? But then when he said, he said, like, I can't be everywhere, I was like, that's the first reality, like, that's the first realism take on what these superheroes would have to go through. Like, yeah. they can't be everywhere. Right. And, like, they're showing, like, petty crimes and stuff. He wasn't stopping those. Yeah. But then he did stop the gang violence one where they were about to beat up mm -hmm. that one guy. Well, yeah, that, that's, that was the thing, right? Like, the petty crime. But, like, that's why everybody thought he is everywhere. Like, the whole dark yeah, alleys yeah, yeah. and still being afraid of him, but he's not everywhere. That yeah, was totally. the implication, yeah. I, I really liked... Um, so, so before this... Like I, I keep bringing this up in our conversations, but I think it's important to note because I, th I thought it was really interesting. Robert Pattinson, after Twilight, he was like, I'm only going to do these like really indie, like art, artistic characters mm -hmm. that like are different. Mm -hmm. You know, that's why he did like all like the lighthouse black and white movie and like all that. And then people were asking like, why do you take on Batman then? Because it's like a notable, they thought it was going to be like a Christian Bale style yeah, yeah, yeah. Batman. Right. But, and he's like, no, Batman's like psychotic. And you're like, what do you mean? <laughs> and, but then when you watch this one it's like because he's only in year two of batman because he said like oh it's two years yeah. since i've been batman like in the yeah. beginning of his like diary actually that was really cool he was writing in his diary every single night remember mm -hmm. he's like mm -hmm. i have to make myself remember that's what i was like it's like it's a lot of a lot of that's like the rorschach from watchmen yeah that's what yeah, yeah. so uh, yeah, okay totally so so like the bruce wayne portrayal in this one was a very psychotic bruce wayne it's like he he was doing his best to save the city but at the detriment of everything around him mm -hmm. like he didn't care about his billions he was just like solely obsessed yeah you know and it was more like alfred well, who was that, that, that was together. the thing um because uh, now the thing about it is because of what he believed his dad stood for that's what True. was the main thing 
that was driving him. True, true. That's probably what drew Robert Pattinson into this role. He probably read the script and he's like, this is a great psychological thriller because mm-hmm. mm-hmm. it's not just about the killer, but it's like, what is Batman going through? Because you're right. He he built this whole ideology around, I want to be like my dad, yeah. who is like justice and like good. Mm-hmm. And you find out, oh, my dad is like just as, not, not just as corrupt, but like still corrupt, you know, relative to what he thought he was. Yeah, like he worked with people. Or like he like mob people. Yeah, he something an event that happened that he had to en- end up eventually using the mob, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which was he, well, he's trying to protect the mob, but like still, it's like I get, went through. I get that. Means. Um, right, right, but like you would never want to <laughs> ever work with the mob. Yeah, for sure, for sure. I right, I'm just gonna put Athena in the room. Hold on one second. Okay, we're back. Sorry, uh, two strikes and Athena got kicked out. <laughs> 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 okay, so um, yeah, the psychological thriller. Um, I think that, you know, this, this portrayal of Batman was so unique that Robert Pattinson will go down as like, okay. So, so like there's Michael Keaton's one, which is the iconic one. It's the first one. And then you have George Clooney and Val Kilmer who remembers those two. No. Right. Then, then you have Christian Bale. Mm-hmm. You're like, oh, it's amazing. Mm-hmm. Then you have Ben Affleck, who kind of remembers that one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Kind of, but not really. No, that was a very limited role. Like, yeah, it, it yeah. wasn't really a Batman movie. It was... Right, right, right. And, and he, he had, like, a bit of a drug dr- uh, drinking problem. So, like, yeah. I remember that part. Yeah. But, like, he had a little bit of P- PTSD, but, like, it wasn't memorable. Mm-hmm. So, like, I think Robert Pattinson's Batman is, like, going to be iconic like the well it already is iconic but like just like the michael keaton one and the christian bale and then you have robert pattinson mm-hmm. he didn't fall through the cracks of the other batmans where it's like mm, could have not done with that yeah, you know yeah, what i'm yeah. saying right 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 what do you think of uh selena kyle because she's been in three movies now the her portrayal i mean three three um uh michelle pfeiffer one which is with michael keaton have you seen that one batman two it was like the sequel oh, to Penguin um, was in it. It was like Catwoman and Penguin. Oh, yeah, and yeah, I remember that now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. But hers was like, hers is pretty good. I, I did like her one. She was kind of like psychotic as well. Uh-huh. She was talking to cats. It was pretty cool. Um, what did you think about Anne Hathaway's Catwoman? Uh, it was good. It was good, but not memorable, right? Yeah, I don't think you remember that, no. The only thing your brother brought this up and I was like, oh, that is pretty memorable. That one where she was like crying and then she went from the hysterical part, to yeah. serious. Yeah. That was cool, yeah. but I don't remember anything else. Right. Right. And then the Selena Kyle in this one was like, this is the gritty Selena Kyle. Like it reminded me of uh, that comic or that movie we watched Batman year one. Mm-hmm. It was, that was the kind of Gotham city. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Right. It was like, yeah. it was not fixed yet. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I, I like that scene when he was followed her to her apartment. Yeah. And then how she was changing into the, the Catwoman clothes. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. He's like, he didn't expect that to happen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. True, true, true. Like, yeah. What? <laughs> oh, she's like a vigilante mm-hmm. or like a cat bird yeah, yeah, as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's funny because, like, when, yeah, even the subtle undertone of that, it made you realize that there are a bunch of people in this world that are just as like uh just as extra as batman i don't mm-hmm. know what the word is but like yeah i guess you, you yeah, know yeah. what i mean like another like, oh, not necessarily a vigilante but another weirdo yeah, yeah you yeah, know yeah, like yeah, oh yeah. like penguin's a weirdo calvin's yeah. a weirdo mm-hmm. but like they're normal in their world mm-hmm. but they're just doing like or riddler's a weirdo right mm-hmm. he had um but let's get into it actually riddler what do you think is the villain i think that was the thing. I was like, "How are they going to do Riddler?" Right? I know, right? Because I Jim played Carrey was the, the games. Last one. Yeah, and, and and in the games, it's like it's just more like puzzle solving. Yeah, right? and he's like funny. Yeah, but yeah, like yeah. not really. But I think this one was a really good way of that. It, there's a puzzle solving aspect, but also like he's crazy, and it makes sense. Yeah, and yeah, totally. And but that's why I said it's like um, Seven and Saw, because like Riddler yeah. remind me of Seven and Saw. Mm-hmm. Like the if you go watch, if you listen to this, and you want. To watch like seven it's it's about a serial killer who's taking the seven deadly sins mm-hmm. and they're trying to figure out who he's going to murder next mm-hmm. given 
like the seven deadly sins. Okay. It's about two detectives, right? right. And, um, and he, he murders them in like a very like related way that kind of gives you a clue as to why they're one of the oh, seven. Okay. So the, like that serial killer could have easily been the Riddler, mm-hmm. you know? And, mm-hmm. and I think that kind of portrayal of the Riddler was really good. Because it's it's like not humorous. It's like I am a serial killer. Yeah, yeah. Even the way the opening scene where he showed up in the mayor's house and they showed him behind listening, yeah, waiting, yeah. and then he just bludgeoned him to death. Yeah. Like I was like, what movie is this? Right. Right. This is not a bad. This is not a Batman movie we're used to. No. 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 Because he bludgeoned him to yeah, death. Yeah. Like wow. Mm-hmm. So that was cool. Yeah. It, like because people were getting killed, but like they didn't know the connection right like that's how batman had to figure out the connection and right. like being in the clubs and it's like but the cops knew because the corrupt ones were oh, yeah, yeah, already yeah. know like oh who's gonna be next or like who's part of this right 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 right, right. true yeah, yeah and they're all like kind of worried like because they were all yeah, yeah they, they it's, knew. it's, it's yeah. a mix of all these types of genres i feel like that was in here that's what made it good yeah that yeah totally i like i like also um I like also how it, if you listen to like, if you know like the story of, um, I think it was the Owls, like Gotham City is run by the Owls. Okay. So they're saying that it would be cool to do a Batman movie with the Owls. And I was like, what, like, how would that, so it's basically um, the Illuminati is running Gotham mm-hmm, City. Mm-hmm. So when they showed it in here that there's like somebody that's actually running everything, mm-hmm. which is the, the snitch. The guy, like Selena Kyle's father, um, yeah. what was his name? Falcon. Falcon, yeah. Um, I was like, oh, you could actually lead up to a bigger syndicate here, yeah. mm-hmm. like for later, for right. the next movie, right. you know? Yeah. But, like they, they left so, because the world was so rich with people, mm-hmm. they felt like there's so many avenues you can take this movie. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, yeah. like okay, they alluded to Joker at the end, but it's like, will Joker be the main villain, or will it be someone else? Right. You, cause, because it was like, well, I don't know who the penguin who it take was. Over. I don't know who it was at the end, though, right? Oh yeah, yeah, true. Well, I mean, there's two ideas of that, but like, it could be Joker, or it could be Two Face. But I, I really don't think to do because why would you make him laugh? He was laughing like the Joker, and then they both started laughing. I, like, I know. That's a Joker that, That's why it was, like, a little bit confused. I think that's why people are in the, like, okay, we don't... But like, I, which I, one, like, I, which I feel one? like the laugh gave it away. There's no... Because Joker, um, uh, Two-Face doesn't do that kind of, like... No, I know, but the way they there. showed his face, it looked like... Yeah, but it's just, you're, like, it's basing it off a face, so it's like... Yeah, the face looked like a Two-Face type of thing. No, but But if you look at the other Jokers... Where his hair is up and it's green, and then like he mm-hmm. has like a like. But it wasn't face. Like, yeah. Like, there yeah. was no coloring on here, right? It was all. It was like very, dark, very yeah, dark. Yeah, but wh- whichever it is, that's still. But like, will you go in that direction, or are you just like laying the seeds? You yeah, know? yeah. Because I think if they did like the owl or something, like a greater yeah. syndicate. That so Batman's I, you, I think I, I don't know much about the owl, right? That would be because you were more into the the Batman it, universe. It's, than... it's just like an underground ring. No, yeah, yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But but they they were kind of alluding to it, so it made mm. you feel like Batman almost felt futile in his. Um, it, it's almost like he spent the last two years in pursuit of trying to fix something, and then he had the realization of, oh, this is bigger than then, me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, when he's like, oh, they're all the the police are owned by Falcone. <laughs> yeah, yeah, when he, yeah, yeah, and yeah. then he's like, wait, how can I possibly fix this problem? Mm-hmm. You know, and then he was saying like, "Gordon, you're a good cop." Mm-hmm. You know, so it's like, yeah, there are some good cops in there, but but how do you undo how do you, so much? But how do you who do you trust too? Yeah. Right, that, that's what they were coming at too. It's like, well, I don't know who's corrupt. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I just assume everyone's corrupt. Yeah. I can only trust this one guy. So then, how do you Gordon. fix how do you fix anything at that mm-hmm, point? Mm-hmm. Yeah, it it was um, it was very much like New York City. Like, I mean, it definitely was New York City. Mm-hmm when the creators of DC, they didn't want to make these places like real, but they mirrored them off places. So they mirrored uh, Gotham city off of New York city. Like I read mm-hmm. that before, Yeah. but even the way they, they made like these four bridges or whatever, mm-hmm. like that connected to the outside world. Mm-hmm. Like that's, that's New York. Like New York yeah. has got bridges. And right, it's like, right. yeah, it's an Island, center. right? It's an Island. Yeah. 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 So 
it, it, it had such a contemporary societal undertone too, because it's like, like what are these deeper connections of mm-hmm. like um, conspiracies? Because we're all wondering that too, yeah, right? Yeah, like, yeah. are there right? Are there people being bought out? Mm-hmm. You know, or is how do you play this game of life? Right. You know, and then so that was interesting from Batman's perspective because you, as the audience, were like realizing the ties that were mm-hmm. there, mm-hmm. and then at the same time, it's like it, it's like they played up this whole rich versus poor mentality. Yeah, yeah. So like, Catwoman was always like you seem, you know, like you were a rich person. Yeah. Because you don't understand, like, even the way you And talk, it's true, though, right? Like, it's that, true, that's, yeah. that's a human thing where it's like, well, no, he's never experienced, like, being poor. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. he doesn't know the, like, you know, like, why they would act in certain ways to survive. Yeah, exactly, exactly. So, like, so it's almost like, it's almost like a reality check movie for yeah, Batman. Because yeah, he was like, yeah. wait a minute. You yeah. know, I'm trying to, like, fix this solution but there's no ubi for everyone mm-hmm. you know what i mean like yeah, there yeah. are poor people and rich people and poor people gotta do what they gotta do mm-hmm. so can you fault them for mm-hmm. being the way they are mm-hmm. you know it's it's more of like the system is is sick and not the person right yeah, yeah. and i think he he in that movie was realizing it mm-hmm. it was a really good like social undertone oh yeah and, and even when um Riddler was saying because the mirror too was Riddler and Bruce Wayne were both orphans. Yeah, but one was a real orphan mm-hmm. and one was like a rich person in exactly. a tower. Yeah. Yeah. Or he said that he's like, it's not really an orphan. Yeah, yeah he's he's like, we he was using the the drops the drugs mm-hmm. every night to like let himself you know go to sleep. He was being like bitten by rats or whatever or avoiding the rats. Yeah, people were dying because it was too cold and there wasn't enough like blankets. It's mm-hmm. like that's an orphan. Yeah. He's like a rich person in a tower is not an orphan. I was like, wow, you like went through that too. Yeah, yeah. And you totally understood his point of view. You know? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. I, I think this I is, like how yeah. they played that too, where when they did an, end up capturing Red, Riddler, it was like the way he was talking about Bruce Wayne, it seemed like he knew who was under the cowl. Was, yeah, yeah, that was a genius. That scene. was a really good way to do it. Because the way they led up to it, they're like, oh, we have this one video. And then Batman was seeing like, who is the Batman? Who is the Batman? And he's like, oh, they like, I he, see my photo, Bruce yeah. Wayne there. And I also see Batman there. And then there was this encrypted video that was mm-hmm. going to be like sent out. Mm-hmm. So he's like, oh no, it's over. So he goes to meet him. And then he kept saying like, Bruce Wayne. He even looked at the camera. He's like, oh man, I'm done. And then yeah. you could see in his eyes like, He's like, it's, it's over. It's over. I spent yeah. two years and it's, it's ruined. Yeah. And then, and then they showed like, he didn't actually know who he was. And that was hilarious. Cause then <laughs> Bruce was like, oh, cool. He felt like the relief and yeah. then he could actually start emoting, like being Batman right, again. Right, right. There was a lot of bait and switches in that movie. It was really good. Yeah. I like how Riddler did it where it's like made by Batman solving riddles was technically working oh yeah what, what he said that, that was so genius that was like he, he made it like no we work together on this thing <laughs> and then it was like i was thinking oh no are they going to indict batman on this too? but it makes sense though because all like why would he have envelopes to batman right it's like telling right, right. him what to do next yeah without telling him what exactly to do so that's like yeah true they were they were communicating secretively in a way yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, like sending code messages, and he was solving it, and then yeah, yeah. But he's actually <laughs> executing on what he wanted. Mary's like, I told you to bring the the pigeon into the light, and yeah. you did it for me. I was like, oh, you being played, Batman. Yeah, that was yeah. That was a really, really good. Like, in terms of an actual movie. Like, irregardless of it being a superhero movie or a Batman movie, it's like, that movie in itself was just a masterpiece. Mm -hmm. Like, you could... It'll be hard, because, like, I feel like some people would be like, why is this person dressing up in a suit, like a bat suit? Like, you kind of have to understand the lore a little bit, but, like, in terms of the actual murder mystery aspect of it and, like, Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. the um, connections, it's it's so brilliant. The writer was, like, a genius. Mm -hmm. But he wrote Cloverfield, too, which is, like, really interesting. He was... I was looking at his filmography. Yeah. And he did like a lot of, he did that Let Me In vampire movie. Yeah, but that was an adaptation. 
but still it's like oh you're in this dark world yeah. of like yeah. i get now why batman was so dark mm-hmm. you mm-hmm. know um one thing okay big question joker versus riddler what do you mean by the current Cr- Joker? christopher nolan's joker or uh the batman's riddler i i, I do like I think the portrayal of Joker was really good by Heath Ledger, but as a villain, I think Riddler was very smart. I think he was like the masterful villain. Yeah. Like he, like nobody gave Riddler justice. It's funny, even like, I bet you the writers are thinking about this too. It's like everybody makes Joker Batman's main foe, Mm -hmm. but Batman's a detective. So his main foe really would have been Riddler. Mm Mm-hmm. And the way they did it was like, like you are solving a detective yeah. thing. Actually, yeah, they, they followed with that kind of thing. Yeah. Because you needed a Riddler. You needed mm-hmm. like mm-hmm. a serial killer yeah. to hunt down. Because it, it is a detective comic. Like Batman, like they even say say that like, they said that in the movie, but I didn't think it was applied to him. I think it was applied to um, Gordon, where he's like, detective yeah, yeah, like, yeah. Because in the comics and in the TV show, they'd always refer to Batman as a detective, mm-hmm. right? So it's like, yeah, because you are a crime, a criminal, like, um, you're like a crime solver. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. He's, yeah, he's solving crimes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's like, it's weird that we've never actually seen that from Batman before. That's true, yeah. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. The actual ethos of Batman is he is a detective, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. you know, but no other no other batman ever portrayed it like that it was always the joker versus batman it was always good versus evil yeah yeah this was like actually batman in his element mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and like what he is yeah you know well one thing i like too is um the humanity of batman the portrayal of it was like he didn't rely on gadgets he wasn't like a superhero well, i mean it was yeah. way more like a detective let me just bring that yeah. back here because i don't think you've seen in so much of where gordon and batman work together yeah no. that's like a pair like they, you know like you, salt, yeah, they were always working together yeah so it's like like normally in any cop show it's like a pair yeah yeah, yeah. and that was yeah. you know what i mean like they were at all the cases working together salt. yeah yeah working together which is what a, a detective, detective does yeah. <laughs> honestly it's the most brilliant movie it's it's i, I saw this um because somebody checked in and was like watching the batman right now and mm-hmm. then forbes magazine wrote the batman we've all been waiting for and I was like, I agree, because that is, <laughs> this is the real Batman. If you want to see, like, what Batman is, like, watch this movie. Don't watch, like, I mean, Christopher Nolan's Batmans were great. They're great movies. They're great Christopher Nolan movies. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, like, in terms of what Batman is, mm-hmm. this is the real Batman. Because even the Batman versus Superman, he was, like, fighting Superman. Like, mm-hmm. he had all these gadgets. He was, like, he wasn't a detective. He wasn't yeah, But this Batman. is also, like, a much older Batman, too. It's, like, a different... But these still, are, it's like I think it's, at because its core. they're core, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But they're all like different. We, we've gone through different comics or styles of Batman. So this is the year one Batman, or the this is like the the real Batman. Yeah, this yeah, is like yeah, yeah. like he is a detective. taking all the elements that were real. And he was solving the puzzles yeah, too. Yeah, like yeah. you could see, he was like he was really trying to figure it out. Mm-hmm. You know, and it's cool how they portrayed Alfred too as like not just some butler but like he alluded to training batman how to fight yeah he was the one who solved the puzzles mm-hmm. remember mm-hmm. he's like oh remind, remind me of my circus days yeah, yeah yeah. and he was trying to like right he he solved the first riddle for mm-hmm. batman mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. it's like oh you're not just like someone oh this thing he said like the butler's got a butler yeah. that's how you know you're rich it's like <laughs> that's cool i was so shocked when um the bomb came Oh for, yeah, 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 for Alfred. I really thought they killed him. Yeah, and I that, was like, "Wow, this movie." I mean, they is played dark, it really good. Bro. They played it really good. Where you thought he was dead until uh, the hospital scene. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, oh, I I also love how um, the the police scene where he he like woke up and then they were trying to take off his mask mm-hmm. and then he he like escapes and he runs to the top and then you see that bit of fear in him. Yeah, he's yeah, like, yeah. oh, this is high. Yeah. You know, like usually, usually Batman has no fear. Like if you watch The Dark Knight, um, he's like jumping out of 
I, again, I think about the Dark Knight. I think there was more human in Batman in here than yeah, I've yeah, seen totally. in other Batman. So. Well, year two, right? So he isn't he's in stone cold at himself. Yeah, like yeah, he hasn't yeah. destroyed all of his emotions yet. Mm-hmm. But like in every time I think about, you know, the Dark Knight, I'm like, it was an amazing movie mm-hmm. in terms of a movie. Because like, remember that one scene where he jumps off of the tallest building in Hong Kong yep. to fly down to mm-hmm. the next one? Like he had no fear there, mm-hmm. right? But this Batman, when he ran to the top of the tower, he's like, oh, my God, this is like, I'm going to fall. And then he, like, put on the wingsuit, and then he, like, did the glide down. Yeah. And then when he hit the the bottom part or whatever, and then he started rolling, it looked so painful. And he started <sighs> limping off, and yeah. you're like, yikes. You know? That, that was a good scene because it was like, yeah, the human element. Yeah. yeah. Even his fighting in the very beginning, I was like, this is a, like, you weren't invincible in your fighting no like you were yeah. getting hit you were getting hit and well. like if you didn't yeah. have that armor you'd be done yeah yeah which which i really like because like a lot of movies you know they portray you know this one person who could take on multiple people like john wick right mm-hmm. you could take mm-hmm. on multiple people and like barely get get out uh like hurt mm-hmm. but in this one it's like like he was getting banged up, which is super realistic. Of course, they're not going to fight you one by one. Like they started to like hit him with bats on the other side. But if he didn't have the armor, he would have gone down. Yeah, yeah. So it was like, oh, this is very human. You know, it, it made me feel like I could have put on that suit and been Batman. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like mm-hmm. there was no. But he was getting hurt, like especially that, that was it the shotgun? That, like, oh, at the very end? Yeah, at the very end. It was too it's close. Like, yeah, he was like, he was oh. like oh, that. It doesn't matter what kind of armor you have. That's still like yeah, yeah, yeah. super painful. Yeah, I I like how um, that the last scene where he got shot with the shotgun and then he was like going down. He saw like Selena Kyle. He's like, no, I need to save her. And then he put that. I think you about those right. It wrote, I thought it was adrenaline too. And the man was like, what? Like yeah, yeah what was that? But uh, I could see. Talk. I can see it being like a little bit of the Bane juice. Mm-hmm. Cause yeah, because he did go crazy. Yeah. He did go crazy. Like he went into rage mode. Yeah. Uh, well, the first thing I thought was like, what is Witcher, bro? Like, <laughs> I was like, you got, you got yourself potions? <laughs> but like, if it is the Bane juice, that is pretty cool. But again, see, it's like, it's like you had to have been in that world. Mm. So like people would have watched that and they were like, oh, what is that thing? He injected him. But you could easily be like, yeah, that's the Bane juice. Right. And then somebody just takes all that and is always on that thing and then mm-hmm. they became Bane. Right. Like you could see you could see the connections to other things. Mm-hmm. It it really did feel like a living world. Yeah. Yeah. And it, interesting that at the end like they actually destroyed like the floods oh, and that, everything. That was, that was, that was something. Saying. That's why I asked you about um Joker versus um Riddler because Joker got really close but he never did it. Yes. But Riddler was the first one where he actually blew it up and then everything flooded in the city. It was like, yeah. wow, you actually pulled this off. You did something. Yeah. You actually did something that, yeah. that destroyed the city. And we were all shocked. Like, yeah. oh, you're really going to destroy Gotham right now? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, and then even like. And there wasn't like, like not even like, like when, when you're seeing that happening, like the light up on the ground floor of his, like all the placements of the, the trucks. Or the yeah. vans with the bomb. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. like, okay, how are they going to stop all of them? They can't. Right? And then you and couldn't they stop actually it. couldn't do it. Yeah, there's no way to do well, this. You you thought like, oh, this is a Batman movie, man. Yeah. He's going to stop them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But he didn't stop them. And no. It was like, ooh, he couldn't and, stop them. And just, what, as he's alluded in the beginning, I can't be everywhere. True, 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 true. Yeah, very true. Mm-hmm. Uh, what well, one thing I liked too at the end was like when they were on the dome. Yeah. It reminded me of like a Hurricane Katrina kind yeah. of situation. Yeah. And then like Batman was there like with everyone. I was like, wow, this is a, this is also a cool portrayal because <laughs> it's like, it felt very human. It's like there's just a person in a bat suit helping these army people <laughs> get other people out yeah. of here. Yeah. Oh, that that was another human element of it too. Like when the first murder went down, and then they brought Batman. He's walking through the crime mm. scene, yes. and they were all being like, "Who is this freak?" <laughs> right and you're like yeah he is he, he would be a freak yeah, yeah, yeah. everyone was in police uniform and you just see this dude in a bat suit mm-hmm. and you're like what yeah you felt that you're like he is kind of a weirdo mm-hmm. usually in like the 
the other Batmans that are portrayed, like he shows up later mm-hmm. or like he doesn't actually join the investigation. No, know? yeah, yeah. That's, but, that's never but in the comics he does though. No, yeah, I know. Yeah. So it's like, oh, that's interesting that you put him in with everyone. Already, yeah. I liked also like the dynamic where the the mayor after he died, the one who found him was the son. It's like an or another not, not an orphan per se because he still it had touched his mother, close to home. but it it touched close to home yeah. to too. So it's like, and and then you saw Bruce Wayne at the funeral, like looking and being like, "No, you know what this is? I just realized that it really is a come to Jesus moment for Batman the movie mm-hmm. because remember I was saying earlier that um, Batman didn't realize how deep everything went. Yeah, because yeah, he was yeah. so secluded. Right, right, right. right. He, he's like, oh, maybe I can't save the city. Right. Wait, wait, wait. But but then at the the funeral, when he remember he's like, oh, he's like a recluse. Bruce Wayne, Bruce Wayne is a recluse. Mm-hmm. Like he doesn't usually come out. Yeah. And then he was listening to normal people talk, and they didn't know who he was. Remember, like, oh, he got what he deserved. That yeah, one yeah, person, yeah. right? Right, right. And then Bruce was like, wait, what? Mm. He realized, oh, I'm so disconnected. Mm. You know, like right, I've been right, I've been right. staying out all night trying to save the city. But the people don't even want to be saved. Right. Right? Like, you kind of had this awakening moment mm-hmm. for Batman in this yeah. whole movie, just being like, am I doing the right thing? Mm-hmm. Right. Right? Like, yeah. Because yeah, yeah. Yeah, the normal people were like, right. he wasn't even Batman. It was just the normal people were like, like, good riddance. Yeah, because, like, what? well, yeah, because, uh, like, all the protests outside, too, because. Yeah, and they were all wearing the Riddler. Yeah, because they were corrupt people, right? Yes. He, he was very. I would say, uh, like, like, uh, like colorblind in the sense of idealistic. Like, He's ideal- too idealistic. Too idealistic. Rosy colored glasses yeah, on his yeah. mission. Yeah. But then it even broke him too, because like you're right, his he believed in his father. Yeah. And then it turned out, oh, my father was wrong. So it was like, you know, you know why this movie is brilliant is because it it exemplified the Tao. It mm. was like um, a Buddhist parable. Mm-hmm. It was like a freaking Siddhartha. You know, right. he, he had this manicured life yeah. and then it broke. Mm-hmm. Like his manicured life, obviously it wasn't manicured like Bruce Wayne, but he had this manicured ideology of I could save the city. Yeah. Like this, this is a good city, you know, blah, blah, blah. Mm-hmm. And then him realizing like, no, this is just how the world works. Yeah. yeah. He had an enlightening moment. Like, wait he, a minute. I would say he thought everything was like black and white. He, he thought it was black and white, but it's all gray. So yeah. it's like, now how do you move in this? Right. Exactly. Like, and that's how life will always be. Mm-hmm. Dude, it was a life movie. Wow. <laughs> thinking about it. I'm really thinking about it now. It's yeah, like, yeah. like you grow up. I'm saying like in life, you grow up as a kid. Because we've talked about this many times, mm-hmm. right? On the podcast that you grow up as a kid, you think everyone has everything figured out. And then as you get older, you're like, nobody has anything figured out. Yeah. And I feel like that's how Batman was in this movie. Mm-hmm. It's like, yeah, I could just save everyone. I was like, no, you can't. Because some people don't want to be saved. Mm-hmm. That's another thing. Yeah. How do you save somebody who doesn't want to be saved? True. Right? But you can't. You can't, yeah. <laughs> and then it's like the idea of like freedom, right? It's like if you really want freedom, you have the freedom to dissent against freedom. Mm-hmm. That's true freedom. Mm-hmm. Like the fact that like we can go to war. It's like that's freedom. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, you know, if if we were under the Batman ideology of like, I just want to make everything good, it's like who's to say what's good, Batman? Mm-hmm. Is it your version of good? Because that's not the same as their version of good. That's why Selena Kyle was like, "You sound like a rich person." Exactly. Because yeah. like that's your version of good. Exactly. But like I'm at the gutter here. Yeah. You're thinking too idealistically. Yeah, and she, she kept mentioning that. Mm-hmm. That's probably why Robert Pattinson took this role. He totally saw the layers. He's like, "Oh, I got this movie. Mm. It's like a. It's it's not your typical Batman movie, right?" That's so funny. It's like we were actually dissecting this as like a thriller. You know, I like named it like seven and all that, but it's like at its core, it was a Batman movie, mm-hmm. even though it was about like Riddler. Sure. Like the deepest aspect of this movie is like, what does it mean to save someone? Mm-hmm. Yeah. What is good and evil? Yeah. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And it's like, it's I like, think, I think that's what makes a good villain. Like when you can sympathize with them and understand them. For sure, like Thanos. Yeah, yeah, totally. No, even even Riddler makes sense. No, yeah, yeah, because yeah, it was yeah, yeah, because he was poor and like yeah. And then the people that were banding together with him, you know, uh, 
like in the chat room. Yeah. Remember he had like, it was so funny. He used social media. Like it was like a Twitch that he's live streaming. Remember? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Live streaming the, um, the funeral. He was like asking him the questions. And then like they showed he had his own chat room and then they were all mm-hmm. working together. It mm-hmm. seemed like some weird ISIS kind of thing, you know, like <laughs> yeah. some underground terrorism. Yeah. Fringe people. Fringe. Yeah. yeah it was a fringe. So it seemed really realistic in that point of view. And yeah. you could you could understand like when people were using the Riddler symbol, it was like, yeah, they understood the plight mm-hmm. that they were going through. They knew that rich people were corrupt and yeah. he just proved it, yeah. you know, because yeah. he was one of them. Because think about it. He mm-hmm. was just a poor person who wanted to shine a light on the injustices. Exactly. Because that's what the whole movie is about, yeah, right? Yeah, like yeah. Uh, the lies will be untold or something mm-hmm. like that or like uh, no more lies, I think was it. That was yeah. That was a phrase there. Um, but the, yeah, lines. they were all like multiple meanings to the things. That's what Riddler does, right? But 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 it was about like bringing bring, forth the lies, kind of. Thing. Yeah, which yeah. is the corruption. Yeah, which that, is the corruption. That's what that's what Riddler wanted to do. In mm-hmm. essence, Riddler was like Batman. Yeah, that, that's what they say. That's what he said he was working together. Yeah, because he w- they were trying to accomplish the same goal. Mm-hmm. Which is like undo the corruption, yeah. but from two different ends. One was being super fringe, and well, actually, they're both fringe. No, they both are fringe. Yeah, but but one was coming from like a rosy colored glasses, and uh, the other was coming from a dirt colored glasses. Yeah, in a way, yeah, in a way, Riddler taught him that the world is gray. Gray. Yeah, yeah, totally. Yeah, because yes, exactly, because his opposite self was Riddler. They mm-hmm. were both orphans. Yeah. 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 Fascinating. Yeah. Really good movie. Yeah, really good movie. <laughs> I, I really like the actors that they chose too in this movie. Yeah, I was gonna get in I wanted to talk about that too. Like the, the characters or the actors played those characters were really well but, chosen. But so so okay, the reason why I say that though is because they're all in the same boat. So Robert Pattinson wants to only do artsy movies. Mm-hmm. Uh Selena Kyle she if you listen to her like backstory and stuff she like grew up um in the countryside with her mom who's like teaching her about like spirituality she didn't know about hollywood at all her father's lenny kravitz yeah and like so she's kind of like doing these roles of like women empowerment or like let me wake up the world like even watched her interview and she's like ew why is a woman have to be saved by man i was like okay that's that's kind of like left field as well and then uh, Gordon was in that mo- uh, show Westworld yep. which had a lot to do with like what is society what is reality mm-hmm, mm-hmm. so it's like what drew all of the Andy Serkis you know yeah. he really does like these really fantastical movies the Riddler was in um, those he was in uh, what was that one 12 Years a Slave 12 Years a Slave uh, Prisoners he's also he was also in um, I was watching a little bit yesterday uh, Looper he was in that too. Oh, really? Yeah, so, okay. So he was picking all these, like, psychological dramas. And, like, how do you rope in all of these actors that want to do psychological dramas to a superhero movie? You make the superhero movie a psychological drama. Because mm-hmm. I was like, this is, like, star-studded, but not star-studded like Brad Pitt. No, no, no. It's, like, star-studded like, these are actors I like. Yeah. Like, I would want to watch their other right, movies. Right. And one more was Colin Farrell. Oh, oh hell yeah, I forgot about him. Because he's he didn't even look like him. No, it did not look like him at all. He did a really, really, good really, job. really good job. As Dude, this guy, like, he, but Colin Farrell too. He's he's like in that boat as well. Like yeah. very kind of off center. He's not like a leading. He he's, was for a bit, but like, yeah, he yeah. Like, he's been off of screen for a long time. I would say. Yeah, yeah, yeah. right. So yeah, he has been. For a yeah. While. So this is a good. Like it doesn't even look like him, but it's. Yeah, he went Good. to, uh, I was telling you, he went to Starbucks with the prosthetics oh, yeah. on because he wanted to see, like, it, are they good prosthetics? Mm-hmm. And nobody noticed it was him. So he's like, oh, perfect. Like, this is, <laughs> like, the makeup was excellent. Right. And, like, even when he was doing that thing about, well, you know, Colin Farrell's got a really thick accent. You yeah. Know? yeah. So when he did, like, this Italian kind of penguin style accent, remember mm-hmm. when he's like, Oh, am I the only one that knows the difference between Spanish and Italian? <laughs> Il, el, and I was like, like that one scene of his like tirade, like being like, "You guys are terrible detectives." Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was like, "Wow, this is a really good acting scene." <laughs> I mean, even like the Riddler when he was in jail and he was like crying, he's having an outburst. I was like, "This is a really good acting scene." Yeah, 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's really good. <laughs> the only I love Robert Pattinson's version of Batman, but it it reminded me a lot of Twilight. Because if you go back and watch that, Edward mm-hmm. Cullen is exactly like Batman. So it's like, oh, I could see why they they probably watch that and they're like, yeah, just be that guy, <laughs> you know. And then mm-hmm. he was like brooding and like emo. Right. Yeah, but it's funny. Like if you watch Robert Pattinson's interviews, he's not at all like the characters he plays. Right. Okay. <laughs> he's like super artsy and weird. He's mm. like a very like awkward person so when you see him as like batman brooding and then you see him in like tenant as like this suave super spy yeah, yeah. you're like you are a really good actor because you actually broke out of your shell mm-hmm. to be to be these people you know yeah i mean he's come a long way from... he's come a long way from like harry, harry potter. potter yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> but that was the thing right he didn't want to do these like weird hollywood yeah. things he's like i'm done with those i'm mm-hmm. just gonna do these artsy movies so it's like how do you merge artsy movie with mainstream public it's like yeah like this is a big mainstream one but i feel like it's it's a different kind of batman yeah than we know yeah Yeah, totally yeah well what else about the movie um you said the car you liked the car yeah like a lot of the scenes were um like they were holding the shots for a longer time yeah yeah. some of those scenes and that I like because it's building tension. Right, 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 right. Right? It's like, and like when, when they were introducing the car, uh, Batmobile, it was like, it's got its own character. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it was like super powerful. Yeah. It's like he couldn't, it was almost like a horse. Like, yeah. You know, yeah, he's yeah, like yeah. trying to rein it in. He's like, yeah. how do I control this thing? But like, obviously you can control it, but like. Right, right, right. But it's, the, it's also like, it's like it was like you, alive you, yeah, yeah, yeah yeah it's like alive you want to it's turn like it's coming up alive yeah yeah, yeah. coming on alive and then <laughs> yeah and even that um the car chase scene was excellent too because it wasn't over the top like you see like he wasn't even a perfect driver like there were exactly, things yeah, yeah, yeah. happening that he had to maneuver around but also like getting hit at the same time <laughs> but but like okay to, to go back to that whole idea of like really good movie versus like true to the comics mm-hmm in if you look at like Christopher Nolan's Batman, that was a really good movie mm-hmm. because he had long car chase scenes, like Batman breaking through buildings and like. But this this car chase scene wasn't like long at all. It was, it was no. like it was to yeah. the point. It was like we yeah. just need to show you. Also, there was fear in in Batman too because it's like, like yeah. when he was going. On no, but, the... but, but but yeah, totally yeah, yeah. But but that that fear that you're saying is like why this was more comic than movie because mm-hmm. it's like let's tell the story we yeah. don't need this like like the story itself is good we don't need this extra bells and whistles yeah yeah yeah, yeah. no 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 right, right. Yeah. I, I like how I like how it was all centered around a drug bust too mm-hmm. it was like around drugs I remember like even when the before the car chase scene Selena Kyle's trying to steal all the money right from her uh from that drug bust yeah and then she finds the dead girl, her friend, in the mm-hmm. car. So you're mm-hmm. like, oh, this is like a, this is a mob movie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then they, then they had full-on guns. They, like, used an Uzi on Batman. <laughs> I was like, like, this is a real, like, it felt like a, it felt like a real movie. It felt, like, really realistic. <laughs> like, you would shoot Batman like that. Yeah, 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 of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know, it, it was. You had a gunfight. You had yeah. a legit gunfight at mm-hmm. a drug scene. Mm-hmm. You know, it wasn't like some superhero. I mean, by the end, it was becoming more superhero-y. Like when um, they were taking down the Riddler's henchmen and then mm-hmm. like the whole city was flooding. That's when yeah. it became a superhero movie. It's like, okay, we need to like still do Batman justice. You know? Like what he represents. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah. But like prior to that scene, it was it was very much a, mo- a detective movie. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. You know? That's what it was. It was, like it was a, detective a detective movie. movie. Yeah. It was a detective movie. Yeah. yeah. Hunting down the serial killer. Mm-hmm. And then it became, yeah, a superhero movie. Because you have to. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it is. The, the only thing, I was saying this in the car, the only thing I didn't like about the movie was uh, the final scene where they were biking off in opposite directions. <laughs> I was like, you could have cut it. Yeah, that was why, a bit of a weird scene. It was weird. Uh, like, uh, why were you we driving together at the very end? Like, I would agree with that, yeah. That was a bit of a weird scene. I think that... Should have cut that out. <laughs> that was awkward. 
Like, why are they like driving side by? Why are they motorbiking side by side? Like, I knew like like it's very predictable. Like, okay, they're gonna both turn opposite directions. Yeah, exactly. Like, that was yeah. very predictable. But then he watched her drive away. Is like, ah, oh, was like, what are you doing? But I guess like <laughs> the love, maybe like the love story. This is the love of your life getting away. They tried to play into that, but yeah, I felt like it could have been different. It's a little weird. Yeah. But you know what's funny? She's like he's like oh she she'll understand me right like that's why he like loved her but at the end of the day if you look at the movie she had a false portrayal of who batman was yeah. remember she was like oh we can get into some hijinks together we mm-hmm. can like do it. but he's like no he doesn't do any of he that he doesn't do any of that yeah. he's like a good person mm-hmm. you know so like her conception of batman is not the the one she fell for like if she knew who Batman really yeah, was, exactly. would yeah. she actually have fallen for Bruce Wayne? Mm-hmm. Like, no, because that's opposite of what she what she is. She's like, yeah. oh, I'm not rich. Remember, she's like, oh, we can rip off a bunch of hedge fund types. It's like, <laughs> uh, he's a multi billionaire, <laughs> you know. But like, they she didn't know that. Exactly. So she had like a one sided, blinded love. Yeah. And I think he knew that too. Mm-hmm. I think he could feel that when she said like, let's escape together and rip off some like hedge fund people. I think he was like. Oh, you don't know me at all. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know? <laughs> yeah. The the one thing, the one scene that I love that they kept coming back to was um, the the bar, uh, the club scene at the entryway. At the door. Right? Yeah. Like, the first one, do you know who I am? And his Batman. And then, like, his their response to him was, like, totally different than when bruce wayne showed up again yeah, yeah like yeah. do you know who i am and like they welcomed him in it was like oh you should have done this from the beginning yeah but yeah, like yeah. you could see the dichotomy of like bruce wayne versus batman yeah yeah they both get treated completely differently they were, yeah that was very very shown like very much shown. yeah that's yeah. why it was cool i was like yeah. this is a really cool way to do it yeah and i like how it played like there are things like in the comics or like in in the cartoons where like the henchmen they all look the same so they had the guys or twins they look the same so it's like it was funny the play on that they were doing with that yeah 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 totally yeah that, that's the comic book element yeah again. that's the comic book element yeah but in a way in a way that it makes sense yeah they're, like, yeah, they're twins <laughs> oh I, I also like how um they went back to that scene again at the end when he like knocked and then they opened the door like oh nobody's here and then he like snuck inside mm-hmm. and then he went to the power room and then like cut the power yeah. but he didn't cut the power in like a batman way like this is what i mean about they didn't they made it so realistic so like if this was christopher nolan's batman he would have went to the power room used a little like device and that yeah, device yeah, yeah, would have yeah. just shut there's down a the timer on the device right and then all like it hacked yeah. into the system yeah. shut everything yeah. down yeah. but he had like a saw cutter <laughs> and just like cut the power like he literally cut the power yeah, yeah, yeah. with the bus on you're like oh this is so <laughs> this is so like i could have done this bro yeah 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 the only technology he had was like that he used a lot was a grappling hook yeah that was that was it yeah he had the car like but those like were one scenes and like mm-hmm. the bane juice one scene uh the little batman bomb that he used to like shoot this like uh explode the yeah um thing yeah that but the one he kept using was the grappling hook. Mm-hmm. So again, that's like a normal like Batman that would he would have. Yeah, that would make right, sense right. To have that. But, but that's what that's cool. Like it kept it human. I was like, I could have done this with a grappling hook too. Mm-hmm. You know, it like there wasn't anything. He wasn't like hacking into a system. Like they didn't make him like invincible. Yeah, the only tech he had was having recording the things that he's seeing, which is the like only tech eyes, that yeah, he yeah. really had. And he shared that with Selena too, yeah. right? He's like, yeah. you, like when he's like, I need to see in there. It's like, of course you would do that. Yeah. Like I would do that too. Like, <laughs> here, just use this like recording device. Makes sense. It, yeah. it's ve- it made sense. Yeah. It was like very human. Yeah. It had, there was a lot of, that's very uh, like a cyberpunk 2077. Yeah. With that eye thing. Mean, yeah. And especially when she was like in the, when she was like, when she went to the washroom and she's looking at herself and it's like i was thinking that too like, yeah i was like that's very cyberpunky yeah. and then also when he was looking at everyone's face and then he's like no i need to positive id them like mm-hmm. look again yeah so then like through the computer it was telling you through facial recognition who each person was yeah. that was really sick. that was cyberpunk yeah that was very cyberpunk yeah yeah it's really good R- really good yeah i think this is probably 
one I would but it's such a mission it's like three hours I, the I thing is yeah it was a very long movie but it didn't feel three hours it felt two hours I would say yeah, yeah okay I'll give you that one yeah right. but I also didn't want it to end so I felt that's satisfied true too. that's true too that yeah. it was three hours like oh, okay good good, good. Like, yeah, we yeah. get to keep going every time you thought the movie was gonna end like when they found the the informant yeah you're like oh it's over oh mm-hmm. it's not over okay uh all right he's in jail oh it's not over yeah like that was good because yeah. it was like you did want to keep it going mm-hmm. you know yeah yeah but you, yeah it's, it's kind of a mission like like to sit down for three hours like <laughs> that is pretty lofty but it's well worth it, it yeah, it's yeah, yeah it's, it's funny because like robert Pattinson now made two of some of my favorite movies which is tenet i watched that like so many times mm-hmm. over and over yeah, yeah and then uh the batman i'm like i could watch this over and over too <laughs> he's like on a tear right now he's like making really good movies you know i mean like two movies technically but still two really like good yeah, good selections yeah. bro yeah. yeah i mean there were delays on it but just because of covid right it would have been out earlier yeah yeah, yeah totally yeah, yeah yeah but yeah i they haven't greenlit any second movie yet but they would I think I feel like a second movie is to come. For sure, for sure. And one thing that they were talking about, like Robert Pattinson was saying in his interview, is that it would be interesting to see, um, it, would, it would be interesting to see like now the transition of how does a recluse, a recluse turn into like a suave billionaire? Because mm-hmm. they didn't show any of those Bruce Wayne scenes. They showed right. him like hiding, like mostly, like even the beginning when he came outside and like it was morning and he had to put on sunglasses like yeah. I'm not used to the light yeah, yeah. you know it's like yeah because you spend all your time in the darkness so like what is that going to look like when you start making him go to these public events mm-hmm. these functions because they even showed a member she's like I want you to be the face of um, my next campaign the mayor You're right right Remember she's like I want you to do more good for the city mm-hmm. and it's like well in the second movie he has to go do that now right so it's like, what is that going to be like? That'll be an interesting psychological portrayal too. Yeah. Yeah, but who would be the villain? That's the thing. Like you'd have to really. That's the thing. Yeah. What? Does... That's why I think the owl would be cool because then it's like he's fighting another syndicate. It's like it builds on the, or unless they save that for like movie three. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like they they build. There's more. a trilogy in that sense. Yeah. Because like, and then you you could tie everything together. It's like, oh, that's why this happened. This happened. Like that. If they did that, that'd be pretty amazing. If everything tied back together. Right. Oh, I also liked how, because we always hear Arkham Asylum. And mm. then in the movie, you finally saw like the Wayne and the Arkham family, two different families, two different families. are the bedrock of Gotham. Yeah. You always hear about the Wayne family, right? Yeah. But like, True. You're, but all the villains go to Arkham Asylum, which is like a hospital. And you're like, who is Arkham? But it's a, it's a family. Right. It's like, oh, that's... you Again, you fleshed out the and world. And then, yeah, explaining, like, his, his mom was crazy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was or like, oh. Comes from a crazy side. It's and, like... And then, even with that, it's, like, made you question, wait, Bruce, are you just living out your mom's thing, too? <laughs> like, it, does it just run in your family? Because, like, what would push a person to yeah, go yeah. this far? Right, right. You know, a lot of people's parents died. And mm-hmm. they became orphans. What made this person obsessed <laughs> over becoming Batman? Yeah. Like, it really was a psychological yeah. thing. It's like, yeah, it was. Yeah. yeah. You wouldn't be. That's a psychological thing. Right? It, it reminds me of like a genius I'm watching right now, the third uh, Kanye West Netflix mm-hmm. thing. And you could see it the whole time. He had this, like, he had this psychological thing going on, mm-hmm. Kanye West. Yeah. And then with like Batman, it's like, what were the undertones the whole time? Maybe if you looked at his whole history, you'd be like, oh, he was always like this. Mm -hmm. You know, it just got spurred. Like maybe Batman just has OCD. (laughs) Like, you know what I mean? Like he became so obsessed with an idea or like maybe he's like, like slight Asperger's, Mm -hmm. you know, how like, uh, like Greta who's obsessed with climate change. Yeah. It's same thing. It's like, he's obsessed with fixing the city. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, without fully understanding the problem. Because this right. movie, he was starting to understand the problem. He's like, wait, mm-hmm. am I doing the right thing? Because <laughs> um, that was the thing at the end when uh, they asked who he was, the Riddler's person. He's like, he used Batman's line, I'm vengeance. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's yeah. like, 
okay, are you doing the right thing? Because you just <laughs> made all of these terrorists. Incidentally. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You've created the thing that you didn't want. Which it, it, It's like the road to hell is paved with good intentions. Mm-hmm. So like you were trying to like fix the city, but in doing that, you you literally created monsters. You've created, yeah. You've created villains of their own. like. But, but who also think they're correct. Yeah, exactly. So it's like yeah. you... Like because they're, they're doing justice in their perspective. They are, yeah. Or vengeance. But, like, yeah, yeah, in vengeance. They're acting in vengeance because of the corruption. Exactly. So you understood their point. You're like, mm-hmm. yeah, I, I can get that too. Like, you would want to bring those corrupt people down, just like Batman does. Yeah. But you're both doing it two different ways. Exactly. He has the dichotomy. Yeah, Riddler. <laughs> See, again, everyone thinks about Joker as being Batman's ultimate nemesis. But it's like, if Batman truly is a detective, then the Riddler would be his ultimate nemesis. Because yeah, Riddler can get into your head. Yeah. yeah. Joker couldn't do that. Joker's just the opposite of Batman in the sense of just chaos. chaos. Yeah, yeah. But not someone that can get into your mind. Yeah. And corrupt you. Yeah. Yeah, when you look at when you look at Batman vs. Joker, it's like straight up good and evil. Yeah. That's the black and white. Right? But then when you look at Batman vs. Riddler, it's um it's like right and no, not right and wrong. It's like um it's like two extremes. No, they're both doing the same thing, but two two different ways. Yeah, yeah. That's why it's gray, because it's like, he's not doing anything. He's doing things to protect the city. S- same with the Riddler. Yeah, same, yeah, yeah. yeah, that's what I'm saying. They're both doing the same thing. Yeah, interesting. Well, actually, would, would Riddler be considered protecting the city, or just wants to bring justice? Well, because of the corruption. They're all criminals in that sense. Oh, so he's trying to wipe away the... Yeah. True. But at the expense of thousands of people because he killed how many people right yeah i guess he just the clean slate thing yeah oh yeah clean slate age one to start over yeah because because the corruption is too deep yeah yeah, exactly you have to drain the swamp Mm -hmm. that's what that's that's literally his idea he's like let me just start again (laughs) yeah whereas batman's like i can probably fix this and he realized probably can't fix it Mm -hmm. he even questioned himself like what am I doing? Like, yeah, that's what I'm saying. Movie, that, right? That's that's the point of the, the Riddler the right thing. getting into his head like that. But but is it getting into his head or showing him the truth? Sure. Yeah. I you mean, it, I mean like, yeah. Yeah. True. Yeah. It's like. Yeah. It, it's like. But in a way, it's questioning. It, in, yes, I understand. Like showing him the truth, but also questioning his original ideals, right? So that was what I mean by like Riddler getting into his mind. Yeah, 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 totally. Yeah. Well, on, on like a separate note, what what did you think about the oh the Batcave? Like a grimy place. <laughs> yeah, I was like, this is a really cool. Like, this usually, is a really good way to do it. Yeah, because yeah. because it, it also played into Batman's insanity. Because mm-hmm. you're like this. It's so makeshift that it's like, it doesn't look professional. It looks like, it looks just like the Riddler's hideout. Mm-hmm. Remember they went to Riddler's oh, yeah, apartment? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. And it was like, he, everything was like chaotic and like whatever. Just like Batman's mm-hmm, thing, it was mm-hmm. like chaotic and like they, they were more, they were more obsessed with getting the mission done right. than making this like high tech facility that's like professional. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Like, you know right. what I'm saying? It's like, yeah, 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 it's yeah. like, we just need a space. Mm-hmm. It wasn't like he wasn't trying to build an enterprise. Right. Like, you know, Batman, if you look at like Christopher Nolan's, it's an enterprise. Mm-hmm. Like if mm-hmm. you look at it, you're like, okay, this is a legit stronghold. Mm-hmm. But like, just like Riddler's one, it's like, this is just a place where I've gathered all my things. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. It looked like a psychotic person, both scenarios, mm-hmm. you know. And I also like how Riddler's apartment was right next to the club the whole time. <laughs> that was genius. Mm-hmm. Like hiding in plain sight. Yeah. yeah. 
Anything else about uh... uh? It was really good, really well portrayed by everyone that was in it. Yeah, I feel like yeah, I feel like I feel like we covered a lot. Like, I feel like we covered it. Um, I would say that this would probably be on one of my top top movie lists. Yeah. Like, I, in terms of entertainment, I wouldn't put this, like, because I have a top five on my website, but, like, I wouldn't put this as, like, a top five, because the top five save for, like, like, really introspective, thought-provoking movies, mm-hmm. but this one is more, like, actually, maybe I would put it on my top five. It's really, because the psychological aspect of it is, like, what is right and wrong? Maybe. Yeah, all right. I would put this on my top five. What do, what do you think? One of the best movies you've seen? Yeah, 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 for this year. Or, like, overall, or... No, you you don't think... You don't like it that much. No, 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 I don't want to say it like that. It's just because I, I don't remember past movies. I always look for something that's good. So this is on that... Okay, yeah, let, let me... Let's let's play the comparison game. Um, the Batman... Dark Knight Rises? Oh, no, no, sorry. I like this as the best Batman. Oh, so, okay, this was by far the best Batman. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. yeah, yeah. Uh, this versus Dune. So that's their level. Their level. They're on par with each other. Oh, okay, okay, cool, cool, cool. So they're equal. Uh, what about this versus... It's another amazing movie. The Watchmen? No, no, this is better than Watchmen. Watchmen. Yeah, I agree. Um, this versus The Matrix? Uh, no, this is still better. Really? Yeah, I like this better. Yeah, I like the philosophy of the Matrix, though. That's why I like. But it's only philosophy, right? Like, uh, like as a whole encompassing and like movie and everything. Yeah, true. Because there was more. Well, I'm I'm still giving it to the Matrix because like, I, sure. I thought that mo- that movie's like that movie's a lesson. It's not really yeah, yeah. a movie. Yeah. Uh, Blade Runner. Well, I, no, this movie is like... No, no, no. Yeah, no, no. Okay. <laughs> I guess the only one I can compare it to is Dune because that one was like... Ph- that was another like phenomenal movie. Yeah. But I feel like it's... They're like on they're par. They're on par. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I fair, can't give fair, it to fair. either one here. Yeah, yeah, I agree, I agree. Because I'm like, <laughs> ah, sometimes you do want that space aspect. and Because like, even the Dune one had like political... Yeah. There's a lot of undertones in Dune as well. Yep. Like about free will choice. Mm-hmm. We do a podcast if you listen to this. Like you want to go back and you listen to that one too. So okay, okay. So would you rate it as a masterpiece? Yeah, it'd be up there. Yeah, I would say it's a masterpiece too. Yeah, yeah. Cut out the last scene though. Was, yeah, minus the last. Scene. The last scene was too weird. Um, maybe, maybe I'll give it to Dune over this one only because of that last scene. Right, but Dune isn't a full, and the story has. That's true. Ended. Fair point. Fair point. The story hasn't ended not, yet for Dune. So Dune Two might suck. Yeah, we'll have to see. Our right, Dune Part One still better than this one. Yeah, just because that last scene for me, I was like, I can't do it. <laughs> you ruined the whole movie for me with that last scene. No, you didn't ruin the whole movie, but like, like it was a scene not needed. Yeah, it was. Like it was not needed. Cheese, it was a bit. Bro. You put yeah. cheese on yeah. there, and then like double decker cheese, and then. <laughs> What are you doing? <laughs> yeah. Makes sense. All right. So definitely go check this movie out. I was going to go through other topics, but I think this one will just be at the Batman. Maybe yeah, we, I think so. We, this is quite. We, we went in depth. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, definitely go check this out. I might watch it again. I'm not sure. Yeah. I'll wait for the release. It's three hours. <laughs> yeah, that's true. true. <laughs> I don't know, but I'm just like, I'm missing the world right I now. Do, I do miss the world. I do I'm like, oh, this would be... Because it's cool now. Now you're not... Because cause like, if you watch it again, you watch it the first time for the thrills. Mm-hmm. Right? You're like, what's going to happen? What's going to happen? But then I feel like if you watch it again, it's like... You're, you're gonna just see enjoying the... it. No, no, but you will see it too. But like, you're no, no, just I'm enjoying saying, like, the world. No, you are um, a bit... Yeah, but you're also probably seeing like where things were... Oh, you're like, oh, that connected there, there, or that connected there, that, that connected yeah. there. Yeah, true point. Yeah, fair point. Yeah. Actually, oh, yeah, well, one more thing, because when you're talking about connections, um, I loved how the drug trade was so rampant in this one. Mm-hmm. Like, everyone was using the drops, remember? And, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. they, even in the orphanage, they were, like, squatters. Yep. I was like, oh, this is a problem. Yeah. 
like it is a big problem even now right like as in current society yes actually you know what that's why this movie was so brilliant because it wasn't just it like this when i was saying like it's not just a spectacular movie because like you don't see the real problems like if you look at like christopher nolan's batman or like the other batmans it's always like the biggest villain yeah is the problem Mm -hmm. it's like yeah the city's good if it wasn't for this villain exactly you know but it's like this movie was like even if you took out the villain the city's not good. Yeah, yeah. Like, how are you going to solve the drug problem? Exactly. And then when, when Selena Kyle brought it up, like, you sound like a person who's rich. Mm-hmm. It's because, like, yeah, those people are are using that drug to escape. But also, like, like when that scene, when he Batman was there with Penguin, he didn't stop the transaction. Batman? Yeah. Like, he saw the, the drug transaction and the money. He didn't do true. anything about it. He just, he let that be. That's true, too. Yeah, that's true, so too. It's like... You, you, if you um, like you, you were saying like there's a the problem here now Gabor Mate wrote a book about it too he, he's like a dude in uh, Vancouver mm-hmm. uh, how like there's like a skid row in Vancouver where like people oh yeah 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 like people who are on like heroin or whatever mm-hmm. like drug mm-hmm. addicts that's where Gabor Mate works so mm-hmm. he's like spending all of his time with those people and he's like all of all addiction comes back to trauma yeah. right like it, it goes back to the rat thing right mm. like if you rat paradise then they won't take the drugs yeah but if you give them nothing they're going to gravitate yeah. towards the drug right because their their life situation is not good so when you looked at the drug problem in gotham city it's like how do you address people's traumas mm-hmm. because that's the real issue batman it's not that they're on the if you stop them using drugs they're probably going to kill themselves right they need that drug to keep living. Mm-hmm. And Batman's starting to realize that, like, it's a systemic issue. It's not just about right and wrong. It's like, how do you stop trauma? Yeah. You know? But he's and, also traumatized himself. But he's traumatized himself. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, totally. And when Riddler was saying that he was using the drops to sleep, it's like, you don't know what that's like, Bruce. Because, mm-hmm. like, you lived in comfortable sheets. Mm-hmm. But like people are dying around me, it's cold, there are rats. I I use the drug to escape. Yeah. Riddler, right? Mm-hmm. So like, how are you gonna fix that? <laughs> you know, are you gonna give everyone money then? Like, is UBI the solution? Right. Right. <laughs> right? It's 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 a question for mm-hmm. us as a society as well. Mm-hmm. Layers, man. Batman was a societal deception. <laughs> It really was. I was yeah. I was gonna lump, lump it as like, oh, okay, it's like a warrior movie, like you learn how to become a warrior, but it's like, no, when you really like through this conversation we had at the podcast, it's like this is this is speaking volumes about our lives, not just about uh right and wrong. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Good movie. Just like Dune though. Just like Dune. Dune had a lot of politics, right? It was mm-hmm. about like different um planets that were like it, the spice was basically oil so it yeah. was about a conflict it's, between yeah and economy resources. And, and resources yeah and power and, yeah yeah all right that's all i got yeah anything else no really good movie oh i actually sorry last thing uh, i i love how in the rea- reality like the realism that they put they didn't make um Robert Pattinson and super jacked. So like mm-hmm. if you mm-hmm. look at if you look at like um the Batman portrayal of Ben Affleck. Yes. He was like swole. Yep. Right? He was like thick but swole, like muscular. Mm-hmm. Like he was mm-hmm. moving crazy plates. It looked more like like Robert Pattinson looked more like an army person to me. Mm-hmm. Like, if you look at people in the army, they're just, like, thick. Right, right, right. He didn't look like like a superhero. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And his body was all banged up with all the scars. Like, yeah. that was really cool, too. Yeah. Like, even, like, Christopher Nolan's Batman. Think about it. Mm-hmm. He was, like, a model. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? Like, yeah. You, you, well, this makes no sense. Like, <laughs> why? Like, where are your scars? Where are your beat-up bones and stuff? Mm-hmm. Yeah, also all goes back to the reality. It was a really good movie. Really good movie. 
Yeah. <laughs> All right. Till next time, uh, definitely go check this one out. You won't regret it. Take it easy. Yeah, Take it just easy. have the time. That's all. Oh, yeah, yeah, three hours? Yeah, yeah, yeah totally. <laughs> I would like to see it again, though. Like, I feel like it would be cool. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Take it easy, Bish. Peace. Bye. All right. Hope you enjoyed that episode. Uh, be sure to like, share, subscribe, all those fun things, and check out our sponsors: Zenro Clothing Co., Portion Bakery, and Podbean. Take it easy, Bish. Peace.